anything. I can say that this cat was rare, but I thought, man, forget it. Yo, homes the Bel Air. What up, what up? Welcome back to the channel. I'm Modi J, and we're locked in. This is the recap for Bel Air episode five. And you know, this week they dropped three episodes. And the way I think they're breaking down the last four episodes will be two next week and then two the following week. But in episode five, the halfway mark, we see that I'm Viv and Uncle Phil. Well, they're about to have their anniversary and we know that they're on a rocky path. So hopefully they can make it through this. While Black Sess is on his way up, Will and Carlton still have to figure out how they're going to sell a thousand T-shirts within one week. So it's going to be a tough journey for everybody. So before we jump into this, we break down this recap of episode five. If you like Bel Air content, breakdowns, theories, and predictions, after show discussions, then you're at the right spot. Hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, and turn on your notification bell so you get something every time I upload. I'm on that road to 50,000 subscribers, so I appreciate each and every one of you. So let's jump into it. This is the recap of Bel Air, episode five. We mentioned that the Banks family, they're celebrating the anniversary of Phil and Viv. Well, Will, Carlton, and Ashley, they're all down in the kitchen. And they're whipping up some breakfast because nothing is better than breakfast in bed. Everyone's in here. Will's over there whipping up the eggs. Carlton got the French toast. Ashley's chopping up the fruit. So this looks like a, a magnificent breakfast, especially for an anniversary. The only issue is when they go upstairs and knock on Aunt Viv's door, Uncle Phil isn't in there. So she's like, wow, this is some amazing food. Then Uncle Phil comes in holding a pillow. And they're like, Phil, where you been? He said he went to sleep in his office. But as an adult, we know when you're sleeping in the other room, everything in this relationship isn't what it seems. There's some issues going on, and all of the kids are starting to notice it. After the breakfast, Phil's getting ready to go to work because he needs to bring in some new clients and specifically work on this Omar deal. Well, he tells Aunt Viv, listen, I don't want us to be mad at each other on our anniversary, so I want to do something special for the two of us this evening. And she's like, you're right. I agree with you on that. I want to do something with you. So at least they're taking the steps to head in the right direction. But getting there is going to be an uphill battle. Carlton and Will are still trying to sell these T-shirts. Uncle Phil comes downstairs and tells them, hey, you need to move those boxes into the garage. We don't want Bill to be stressed because he already knows he has an uphill battle to deal with. But then Carlton comes in and he's talking because he's sensing that something's off between his parents. And he's asking his dad, like, hey, do you want us to take Ashley, leave the house so you can have the house to yourself? Feels like, nah, don't worry about that. But how are you, Carlton? Because we know Carlton is dealing with recovering from being an alcoholic. And it's just a lot of stuff going on right now. And Uncle Phil doesn't want his son to be stressed out over his drama and his issues with Viv. We know that Jeffrey has been going through Frederick's things. And he's telling Uncle Phil, hey, listen, I went through his things. And he's calling a certain number. Now, Uncle Phil is wondering what the heck is going on. Because as we know, him and Jeffrey, they had their clash. But now they're working together as men and not Boston employees. Now, Uncle Phil has a lot on his plate also because he needs to deal with new clients. And he's thinking about stepping away from Erica. But Jeffrey, he has the Frederick issue. And at this point, no one really knows. Is Frederick a good guy? Is he a bad guy? Is he working with somebody? So Uncle Phil is telling them to go figure out what exactly is going on with Frederick. Those 999 T-shirts aren't going to sell themselves. So Will and Carlton are trying to devise a plan like they always do to figure out how to sell them. Now, Will, he sees the flyer and they having a celebrity pickleball tournament up at the clubhouse. Now, Carlton is saying, OK, but what are we going to do? And Will says there's a guy by the name of Pony Rich with 60 million followers. If we can get him to wear one of our shirts, boom, that selling at 999 would be easy. But Carlton says we can't fraternize with any of the clients, any of the guests here. So Will is saying, well, I got an idea. Let's go talk to the manager and see if he knows any ins or outs to try to get close to the celebrity Pony Rich. Well, the manager recommends Will and Carlton go talk to Miss Tina. She's not a ma'am, she's Miss Tina. And she's in charge of the actual celebrity game. Now, when Carlton and Will come over here, they got brand new uniforms on, and Miss Tina, we gonna call her Miss Thang, Miss Tina Thang. And she's looking at the boys like, okay, I need you to be on point. You're gonna be serving drinks. We're gonna have the most exclusive people here. But in order for you guys to get down on this team and actually be servers and waiters and ball boys, 
for this pickleball tournament, you got to beat Tina on the court. Well, I'm thinking Miss Tina's about to get out there and be amazing at this. Will, who's never played pickleball, he goes out here and whoops on her real quick. And Miss Tina says, well, you and your little friend, y'all can both come over here and work for me doing the celebrity tournament. But y'all better be on your A game because we don't mess around around here. Aunt Viv finally meets Destiny, the one that drew the mirror on the wall, the one that Hillary blocked, the one that's been stalking her Instagram. Now, when she gets in here, she's starting to tell Viv how much of an inspiration she was. She said since she was a young girl, she went into a museum and she seen some of Aunt Viv's artwork. Now, this artwork was called Sunday's Best. It was a little black girl getting her hair combed. And ever since then, she figured this is what she wanted to do. Get her artwork out where people can see her or other women of color in the big light as far as art goes. And ever since then, she never put her pad down. She never put the ink down. She never put the paintbrush down. And this is what Aunt Viv is looking for. Will and Carlton, they got the job. They're out here working the main event, the Celebrity Pickleball Tournament. Now, Miss Tina don't want no slouches, so shirts tucked in, back up straight, and keep a smile on your face. They got Carlton serving drinks. Will is the ball boy. Well, right now, all they're waiting for is Pony Rich because they aren't doing this for the money. They're doing this to potentially get a connection with Pony Rich to get black access to the masses. Jeffrey is trying to get closer and closer to Frederick. We heard him talking to Phil about the phone calls that are being made to the UK. And now he's talking to Frederick like, hey, you want me to come hang out with you? Frederick's like, nah, I'm just going to go down to the pub. I'm going to watch some of the football matches. That's soccer and American. And, you know, watch Arsenal versus Man. And he's like, well, Dad, I don't want you to come with me. This is more of a younger crew. But one thing we know about Jeffrey, he doesn't give up like that. And Jeffrey will follow you and follow you and follow you until he gets the information he's looking for. While Carlton is serving drinks, it's the temptations. First, there's some wine in front of him. Then there's some shot glasses in front of him. He gets to shaking. Palms are sweaty. He starts having a little mental breakdown. He starts shaking. And Will comes over here right before he drops all the glasses on the ground. And Carlton says, hey, I just got to step away for a moment. I got to get away from this liquor. It is really tempting. Sharif ends up showing up to Aunt Viv's job. Now, Aunt Viv is looking around like, what the heck is going on? Because you remember, all of the photos were like last night when they were at the club by her friend. So Sharif shows up with a little bit of lunch. And he's like, well, I do have lunch. And I'm flattered that you were talking about me amongst your girls and like my pictures. Now, Aunt Viv has kind of got her back against the wall because this isn't what she like. Is she attracted to him? Yes. Do I ever think that she was going to mess around with him? No. But in this instance, Sharif doesn't know. All he got was the Instagram notifications about some likes on the picture. Jackie ends up pulling up on Will while he's cleaning up. And, well, she's driving a golf cart around, dropping people off. And you know she's kind of upset with Will because she brings up the night of the drag racing where Lisa got into it with her, called her a B. And she was like, well, I'm trying to be a helpful bee around here, Will. I got to get back to work. Plus, you didn't even stand up for me when Lisa said that. Now, Will, of course, couldn't have stood up for her because he's on Lisa's side. Did Lisa wild out? Yes. But Will wasn't going to go against his girlfriend, especially not in the public eye. And he's just looking for a little hookup because he hasn't had a chance to talk to Pony Rich. While Aunt Viv is having lunch with Sharif, having a grand old time, laughing it up, Ha ha! Uncle Phil ends up showing up because it is their anniversary. Uncle Phil plays it cool. When he approaches, he sees he sees Aunt Viv, gives her some flowers, tells her, hey, we're going to have dinner a little bit later on, or we could have did lunch. She's like, we can still go. He's like, nah, don't worry about it. Then he looks at Sharif, and he's like, oh, you're, what's the name? He downplays it as if he doesn't remember who Sharif is. Shakes his hand and tells Aunt Viv, oh, don't worry about it. Continue your lunch. Uh, contact me a little bit later on. So Aunt Viv was like, wait a minute, what's going on here? I hope he isn't thinking this is what he's seeing. But we all know perception is reality. But Uncle Phil, smooth, brother. As I mentioned, Jeffrey, he's following Frederick all around the city. Now, Frederick was supposed to be going to the pub to watch the football matches. 
Jeffrey gives him the updated score. And he's like, man, it was a good match. Now, he's still trying to get information from Frederick. And Frederick's like, hey, man, you don't have to follow me around. Jeffrey says, well, you don't have to have a burner phone. Who have you been calling? I've been catching on. Every night at midnight, you go into the bathroom, run the water like you're washing your hands or something, but you make a phone call. So midnight in California, that's about 7, 8 o'clock in the morning in the UK. So he's like, well, I know you're calling somebody. Who? Or do I have to follow you? So Frederick, he's lost for words. As Carlton stepped away from having a moment, being around the liquor, the smell of it, the sight of it, he ends up calling Spencer, who's in charge of the meetings that he's been attending. Now, Spencer is basically telling Carlton, listen, I'm glad you called, but you got to realize, Carlton, we all have issues going on, and you can't voluntarily take on other people's issues until you dealt with your own issues. Your parents' problem, that's on them. They'll have to work that out. But you can't throw yourself into that because that's just going to add more stress on top of the stress that you have. And one thing we're starting to see is a progression in Carlton, and he actually knew to step away, not to indulge, and contact somebody that can help talk him through the situation. While Will is working, he sees young Jackie driving the golf cart, and one of the people that are attending the event, they're kind of doing some inappropriate things toward Jackie. Talking about, how about a little tip? You showed me around. She's bending over to pick stuff up, and he's creeping out. Ooh, yeah, I like that. So Will comes over here, and he intervenes. Hey, man, what's wrong with you? Get out of here. But Miss Tina sees this, and you know when there's a lot of money involved, the people with the money, they usually get the upper hand. So Miss Tina comes over like, if anything like this happened, Will, you need to let us know. So they end up kicking the guy out, and Miss Tina tells Will to calm down, and he has to storm off. He doesn't even get a chance to talk to Pony Rich. Uncle Phil is waiting at the house for Viv to arrive. Now, you already know it's like a kid coming home with a bad report card. Aunt Viv opens up the door, and she's a little bit nervous because there's a red dress on the bed, some heels, and Uncle Phil says, listen, I want to take you out this evening, and it just be you and I. She's like, do you want to talk about earlier? He says, listen, I trust you. I don't want to overreact to none of that. I just want to take you out to eat and enjoy our anniversary. So Aunt Viv is hearing this, and she's like, you know, I really want to do this. But we know there's an elephant in the room, and this is going to have to be addressed at some point. Now, Jeffrey ended up following Frederick, and where did they go? They end up seeing that Frederick's mother, Jeffrey's ex-wife, Penelope, is here in the state. Now, he's been calling his mom the whole time. They've been in contact with each other. And now Penelope and Jeffrey, they get to have a conversation. And he's telling her, the reason I left is because it was me or it was the family. Now, she's saying you tore the family apart. So now we're seeing that Jeffrey, his son, Frederick, isn't a bad guy. He was just trying to reconnect with his mom and his father. But it was very, very dangerous. And they're saying that the only person that can help them through all of this is the help from a guy with the name of Roman. He's the only one who can help. Uncle Phil rented out one of the most fabulous restaurants just for him and Viv. Now, when they get here, Aunt Viv is looking good in that red. No disrespect, Uncle Phil. But they sit down and Uncle Phil starts ordering his food, sipping on some wine. But Aunt Viv is like, we need to talk about what happened. And she ends up coming clean about what's going on with her and Sharif. Now, she does tell Uncle Phil that she does find Sharif very, very attractive. And that she likes the attention that Sharif was giving her. Uncle Phil also says the same thing about Erica. It just felt like it was new. Now, they have their differences, and Aunt Viv says, you do the right things, Phil. It just doesn't seem like it's real. So now they're both brutally honest with each other, and it's out there on the table about how they feel. Now that all of this is said, they both come to an understanding. They both made mistakes. It isn't just on one of them. They're both busy, so it's not like the fire is still there. They both love each other. It's just at a moment they find their differences are actually the same. And this reminds you of the song, if you like peeing yuckaladas, because they love each other. It's just at that moment in time, there was a little divide. And that's where the business and their work and career came in between them. But Uncle Phil says, there's no one I want to know. 
no one fire and desire that I want to have more than you, Bill. And they get up there, they start dancing, and they get to kissing. Conversation rules the nation. Now, Will got kicked out. He had to go cool off. So he ends up talking to his manager. And they have similar stories. His manager's father passed away. And he was just trying to figure out what was next in life. We know Will's father isn't here in his life, but he is here in California. And his manager says, if your dad is here, it's never too late until it is. At least get that relationship, an open relationship where you can talk. You don't have to be buddy, buddy. But then Jackie pulls up with Pony Rich and she tells Will, you got two minutes. Don't fumble it. So the opportunity is there. And one thing we know about Will, he's going to seize it because he goes over and talks to Pony Rich and he shows him the shirt. And Pony Rich is like, you know what? Black says, I like that. So Will, seizing every opportunity. Phil and Viv get back to the house and you know what's next. It's our anniversary. Carlton and Ashley hooked it up on a projector. They got the old marriage photos of them. They got Tony, Tony, Tone playing. It's our anniversary. Carlton and Ashley dap up because they did their parts as a kid. A lot of times the, the adults, the family, they got to remember we're doing this for the family. We're going to have our differences. We're humans. That's human nature. Nothing is ever perfect. If the world was perfect, it would be a boring world. It would be a boring life. Nothing is perfect and nobody is. But tonight, it's their anniversary. And this is the perfect song. Now, Ashley and Olivia got into it with each other because no one showed up to their band. Well, later on in the episode, there's a young gentleman by the name of Eli. He goes by he, they. He's non-binary, according to Ashley. He shows up and it looks like a guitar or something. He's like, he wanted to be in a band. And well, this matches Ashley's energy. It's just a day late and a dollar short. But she's like, you know what? You want to listen to some vinyls? Remember, she got some new ones from jazz. He's like, yeah, let's go ahead and do that. So Ashley now has a new friend, and we don't know if we'll ever see Olivia again. We see Will with Pony Rich. Black Sess is blowing up now. 60 million viewers. Pony Rich got them on the map. He put on the hoodie. The whole team did. And well, Carlton and Will, they finally got the business up and running. Sometimes you need help from somebody but remember it's not always what you know it's who you know all right there you go episode five recap let me know do you think i'm viv and uncle phil they're going to make this marriage last i know they got past this and it was the anniversary but what happens when it's not the anniversary what happens when we don't have the fancy dinner well at least they got that conversation out there and how do you think carlton is doing did carlton make the right decision to contact Spencer to get that help that he desperately needed. Let me know what you think. I'm Odi J. Make sure you tune in tomorrow night for episode six of Bel Air The Recap Season 3. I'm on the road to 50,000 subscribers. Thanks for watching. I'm out.